Do you want to ask me about it? Or? So, John. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, we are members of the Unity Evangelism team, and in preparation for Global Game Jam, we decided to make our own games two weeks before and share with you the process of design, implementation, and the whole polishing and packaging of games just in two days. Yeah, so what we want to do is to take the Global Game Jam and sort of do our own one internally. So together we got up into three different teams and we're going to be producing three different videos and we did everything that you would be doing in a normal game jam. So like Josh said, you're going to design the game, we're going to put all those features in and we're going to go through what those publishing steps would look like. So yeah, so we started off uh, kind of brainstorming our ideas and uh, sort of breaking up what each individual person had to do. So I'm John, I'm an art evangelist here at Unity and I was kind of responsible for the look dev, the shaders and uh, all of the art assets. I'm Josh, I'm a technical evangelist and myself and Liam decided to split tasks, uh, programmer tasks and editor tasks between us. Uh, yep, so I'm Liam, uh, also a technical evangelist, and I focus on object destruction and some things to make the game feel a bit more juicy. So, uh, should we show them what we've actually been working on? Indeed. So this is This Sucks. So This Sucks is a game, a stealth action game where you play as an automatic robot vacuum cleaner and decided you know what i'm fed up of this life i want to cause as much damage and destruction and escape the human claws so yeah we sort of wanted to take an idea of something quite innocent so the roomba and we thought you know what we're going to make this as destructive as possible so we took inspirations from things like untitled duck game and this is a game where you go around and try and be as much of a, an annoying duck as possible uh, and we wanted to kind of portray that in Unity as a way to sort of flip it on its head. Yeah, so should we, should we go back to actually, like, a big part of the game jam is actually how you reach that first idea, isn't it? So I think we should talk about a little bit, like, what, what, what kind of game ideas do we look at and maybe dismiss, first of all? Yeah, sure. So, so first of all, we, we knew that we definitely wanted to make a 3D mobile game. For no reason at all, I just decided that, and everyone else was quite, <laughs> yeah. quite happy to go along. So with... With the idea of going for mobile, we know that there had to be certain design limitations, which I love for game jams. Having these very set limitations so that you can put together a nice design, put that through to implementation, and know that you've kind of stuck to those very strict limitations. I mean, it's cool to have those limitations. Um, like, you know, where one of our first ideas was having like a, a twin stick shooter. Josh wasn't quite a fan of the idea, uh, but it was cool to sort of go through all these different design iterations of how you can interact with that small world. So a robot vacuum cleaner, uh, in this game sense, all it has to be is one touch, one touch to move where you need to go. And then using the navigation system, it can move through. But this idea didn't come to us quite so easily. In fact, we was probably one of the last teams yeah. um, to have any form of idea of what we wanted to create. We had ideas of uh, making like a 3D um, grid-based game, so it was easier to move our characters around. Uh, as Liam has already mentioned, we wanted to have, well, Liam especially, really loved the idea of a twin-stick shooter with on-screen UI. Uh, me personally, uh, I'm not a fan of that type of uh, game, especially in a game where it's quite hard to implement. Um, so having this one-touch input uh, is such an ideal situation for a game jam. I think it's one of the things about game jams is like you got to come up with an idea that everyone's happy with so that they collaborate their best and they actually give their most. So yeah, so we uh, looked at all of our game ideas and once we sort of settled on this robo vacuum one, um, we had to decide what features in Unity we should be using to best achieve this game idea. Uh, so one of the ones we started and we knew we wanted to start with was the lightweight render pipeline. Yeah, and that's right. So when we're looking at creating a mobile game, we have to understand the limitations of the de device straight away. So going for the lightweight render pipeline, part of the script to render pipeline, um, this really, really helps us to target those lower end devices such as mobile. Oh, yeah, another uh, benefit from the lightweight render pipeline as well is that uh, once we finish with the game, let's say we want to put it on you know, a website or we want to put it on a PC, we still have that flexibility, especially with things like WebGL. Uh, another feature that I wanted was to use Cinemachine. So to make the game feel a bit more interactive, to add a bit more you know, dynamic action into the game, we, uh, we wanted some, some cool camera systems. So Josh actually set up like a, a dolly system. So as you went around the level, 
rather than the camera just like panning straight on the camera, it curved around the stage. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I thought personally, I don't like it when there's a very static camera and it just moves left and right and follows the character from its very static point. Having this curved round dolly track system allowed the camera to move around, but in a very controlled way, sticking on this dolly track, but still following the character and aiming at it at all times. It gives a really nice effect as well. We can add things like noise. so It looks more like a handheld camera following the player, the robot vacuum cleaner around the scene. We could get this started so, so quickly just by installing it via package manager. And within the first few hours, we all separated. We started on our, our task lists and we came together after three or four hours uh, to share with each other what we've done and also merge everything. Uh, and straight away, we could see that we was onto something really fun to play here and very engaging as a, as a game player. Um, the first things we did was separate tasks, so myself, I focused on the navigation and input for the player control and also the camera system. Uh, I wanted some kind of dynamic destruction in the game. So we'll go on to that a bit later. But the, the crux of it that we didn't want it to just be a case of if I hit this object, then destroy it. We want something with a bit more flexibility, something that makes it feel a bit more satisfying. So very first thing that John did was block out and a level for myself and Liam uh, to add all of the functionality and interactivity to. Yeah, because that's a big thing in the game, Jam. Um, you have such a short amount of time that these guys can't wait for all of my assets to be done to actually start prototyping things. Uh, so we use just primitives inside Unity. Uh, the robot vacuum is very simple. It's just a squash cylinder. Um, and you use some boxes, I think. Uh, but the really handy tool was actually Pro Builder. Uh, it can be used for like kind of later on in the stage of uh, game jams and stuff, but at the beginning stage, the ability to just model levels inside uh, Unity really allowed us to kind of get the flow of gameplay. Like we knew we wanted kitchen surfaces. Um, so that allowed me to say, hey, we already have this in the game, it's working, I can now go to 3ds Max and I can actually build that kind of final asset. Yeah, exactly. And it just allowed myself and Liam to, to add in all of that um, interactivity, functionality, to understand how the full level is going to do, get that game loop working as soon as possible, having a start, a menu, um, having everything work and um, merge our scenes together using Colab was uh, really great to do and make sure that you as a team are getting together as often as possible to understand what are the next like set of tasks you need to create and work towards as a team. Yeah, I mean, if you've never heard of Collab before, it's essentially a Git repository within Unity. So you don't need to create a repository anywhere by yourself. It's all handled within the editor. Uh, you can also do uh, like you can revert to like a previous commit as well. So, you know, I'm sure most of you who've gone to game jams before, you've had an experience where, you know, you've lost a file at some point or you've had an error and you've had to you know go back and spend three hours fixing old scripts. If you do regular version control and you can revert to those old changes, not only going to save a uh, decent amount of time, but it's going to be a lot easier for you to work with your team as well. So yeah, so it was, wasn't was quite that simple. Like we did get a lot of stuff done, but kind of what problems did you guys face on the sort of first day? I mean, one of the big ones for me is the, the way we wanted to destroy items. So like I said before, we don't want it to be a case of, you know, if I hit this item, then destroy it. We wanted it to be a bit more flexible. So a good example is let's say there's a mug here and there's a plant down here. I want to be able to knock that mug to hit the plant and then the plant to break as well. So the way we went around that was by taking uh, the velocity of the object and then getting the square magnitude of that, and then comparing against the previous frame. If it's dropped by half, then we know that it's probably hit you know, a, a solid surface, at which point we then destroyed the object. Uh, John created like some uh, some alternative versions, which were like cracked, uh, which we all put rigid bodies on, which gave you like a nice smash effect of, you, know, you, you sort of see the item that you make get destroyed. Uh, another cool thing we did with this was a multiplier. So to make it, it feel a bit more intense, the more objects you destroy within a certain space of time, you get a little multiplier going around. Once that multiplier hits uh, times eight, the uh, the nice peaceful elevator music stops. Some heavy metal comes in, flames come out the back of the the ro robot vacuum, and you 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 speed up very very quickly. How did you how did you come up with the idea to do that? Because I remember you suggesting that, and I was like, yeah, do it. <laughs> I mean, I suggested it very lightly, and then I sort of went away for a half an hour and just came out. Guys, look what I made. I remember you're like, I'm pushing something, and then you're like, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. At this point in time, I'd already left a little bit earlier than the rest, and I come back the next day, and they say, hey, 
pull this <laughs> pull this uh, latest commit and uh, see what happens. And I was pleasantly surprised. Like it's crazy and it adds to the whole ridiculousness of the game. But that's why we wanted to make this type of game. You guys were also doing some uh, sort of early builds to play test by yourself. Uh, you think you also use something from the asset store? Is that right to test builds? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so we used um, a tool called Build Report, and the reason we used this was because. Again, we're, we're deploying for mobile, so we want the file size to be as small as possible. Mm. I think at first we found out when we built it without much um, the testing and getting rid of assets, it was over 50 megabytes, which is far too big for such a small game. Um, we use this build report uh, tool to understand which are the big assets, what could we compress, what could we get rid of, and we got it down to around about 35 meg, just in a, about 30 minutes. So at the end of the last day, uh, it was kind of time to bring everything together. Um, I took everything that wasn't in the final scene, um, sorry, everything that was in the prototype scene, I took over sort of all the game components and moved it into the uh, actual kind of nice artistically built version of the scene, uh, which was a little bit prettier, I think. Yeah, for sure, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so once we moved everything over there, um, I was kind of done, for the most part. Uh, I still wanted to keep busy though and see, still keep improving the game where I could. Um, so while Liam was placing all the assets around, kind of getting all the prefabs and making everything, uh, making sure everything would still work and rebaked the nerve mesh I think, um, I went through and actually created a logo for the game and uh, added a little bit of branding for the edge page and stuff. Uh, just why these guys sort of built the game, made sure everything worked. If you haven't been to a game jam before, definitely, you know, maybe look up at uh, game, global game jam uh, locations and uh, yeah, kind of really see if you can actually attend one. Because uh, if you're interested in making games and you're not even making them right now, it's a really fantastic learning experience. I know I often learn more in a short game jam than I do in the kind of weeks prior even. Uh, it's just a really great learning environment. And game jams are so great for trying new things. In fact, for me, the first time that I ever tried Unity was at Global Game Jam seven years ago. Wow, where was that? That was in Hull, my hometown university. Wow. So yeah, the very first time I've used it and I've been working for Unity for five years since. So it really can be the start of your career or a job or anything at all. And with that note, I'm so psyched for Global Game Jam. John and I are visiting the largest site in the world in Egypt. And Liam? Uh, yeah, I'm going to Hamar over in Norway. So it's going to be a really good experience, my, uh, my first time in Norway. Please check out the Unity Global Game Jam landing page to check out um, the asset store lists, the, the free asset store lists that we've put out. Um, check out the other two of these videos and more importantly have an amazing global game jam and whether you're a first time Unity user or an existing Unity user have an amazing jam and make something awesome. We'd love to see what you create. Please join the Connect group Global Game Jam 2019 and share with us what you're creating. We'll be there uh, on location but also in online as well. So thanks for joining us. Goodbye. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. We're we gonna have like after credits bloopers. Yeah, yeah. You ready?